How's it going everyone? It's Sam. I want to explain to you why I've largely stopped plowing money into stocks and why I've been putting into crypto because I think there's huge upside potential for crypto and I want to explain it to you here today. This is going to be a little bit of an overview. I think there's going to be a ton of good information in here and let me be clear. I've not stopped investing in all stocks or anything like that but I see there's so much upside potential in crypto. And while I think stocks are still valuable, they don't fluctuate as much, they're good tax advantages, I see so much upside in crypto. And I wanna explain that to you here today. And let me be clear, again, I have been investing a little bit into stocks, but a lot of it has been actually in crypto related stocks too. If you guys don't mind hitting the like button, I really do appreciate that. It helps out the channel. Please hit subscribe too. If you guys want to see what I'm buying every single time that I buy, you can check out the link down below to Patreon. We also have a giveaway going to give away 100 Cardano here in the next week or two. Thank you guys and let's get into it here. So the whole cryptocurrency market right now is $2.3 trillion. When you compare that to the global equities market, it's about 50 times smaller. I like stocks a lot, and I think that there are many pros to having stocks. I think that it's great for tax advantages, uh, getting tax deductions, but I don't think we see the same potential right now in stocks that we see in crypto. I mean, in stocks, if you have a 1% day, that's great. In crypto right now, people, uh, I, I think people will be experiencing much more than that over the coming months. So why do I think this? Well, this is one of the reasons. First, Vast Bank became the first chartered U.S. bank to offer Bitcoin buying and custody to their clients from their online banking. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, you can buy straight from your bank accounts. Now, I worked in retail banking. I realized how big this is. A lot of people don't understand how to, how to use a phone. A lot of people don't want to go through it. A lot of people don't want to uh, have to figure it out. A lot of people hear about scams and all these things. A lot of the wealthier clients are older and they don't want to have to deal with this. Some of them have financial advisors, but some of them just rely on the bank. Some of them just rely on their personal banker every single day to help them figure stuff out. So the fact is some people will be investing straight from their bank accounts and we've seen all the other big banks offer this to their wealthier clients recently, this is gonna be rolled out to the general public. I think a lot of them wanna do right by their wealthy clients first, and then they will go and offer it to all their clients. It's probably gonna take a little bit longer too because it is kind of a big endeavor. But like I said, there'll be so many people that will just invest from their banks. They get a little bit of money in, they think, okay, I'm just gonna invest in Bitcoin, it only goes up, at least that's what they'll be thinking. And then they will invest in Bitcoin, they'll buy some Bitcoin. Sure, they might buy and sell it a little bit more because they'll use it as like a little piggy bank and then probably as soon as they find someone flashy, they might buy it. But I think a lot of people will be throwing money into cryptocurrencies because of this. And I see this as the easiest way that people have ever seen to buy cryptos. A lot of people, again, just aren't willing to do it themselves. So not only are retail investors going to be buying, but also this was a study done by Fidelity. 90% of these 1,100 institutional investors said that they expected their company or their clients' portfolios to be to include digital assets within the next five years. So a lot of institutional investors, big money is going to be coming into cryptocurrencies. So. This is one of the only liquid assets that these people can buy. I mean, they're not going out and buying real estate for their clients' investment portfolios. It's crypto and it's stocks. That's something you have to consider. Also, this has much more upside potential when you think, okay, this has a $2.3 trillion market cap compared to stocks, which is $110 trillion. So there's a lot more upside potential. Even just a small amount can make a huge difference. We also have countries accepting Bitcoin is legal tender, right? There's mass adoption. So you're going to be able to pay for products in different countries with Bitcoin, with cryptocurrencies. This is going to happen in other countries. This is going to happen in other states. I mean, certain certain companies in the U.S., you can already do this. But if people start using it more and more often instead of the U.S. dollar, it's only going to push up the price. Of course, this will be a learning curve. This will be something that takes some time, but it is something that will happen. Now, we also have the fact that a lot of people don't understand what Bitcoin is, right? It's a $51,000 asset. Some people think that it's nothing, it's worthless. And Michael Saylor says, when people don't understand an asset, that's the 
best time to get in if you feel strongly about the asset. If you put in a thousand hours understanding it and then someone that puts in one hour doesn't like it or thinks that it's, you know, thinks that it's not worth anything, then you have a, a good amount of reason to believe that you're right and they're wrong. And when people don't understand it, that is when there's actually upside potential because not everyone has gotten on the bandwagon, right? Everyone thinks that Amazon and Apple are worth a lot of money, but not everyone thinks that Bitcoin's worth a lot of money. So one way to understand it, which I think a lot of people don't understand, is instead of thinking about it as this thing that's so volatile and you know maybe it's worth a lot, maybe it's not, I don't know, uh, think about it as a digital bank, right? There's only so many spots in the bank. Let's say there's 21 million. And right now there are only about 18.8 million spots in the bank, but there are no other banks around, right? This is the best bank. This is the best bank where you don't lose money, you don't lose money to inflation or anything like that. Let's say there are no other banks in the world and this is utility. This is utility. This is not some like huge investment where you're just gonna make a ton of money. Think about it as a digital bank. There are only 18.8 million spots every single year. They offer up a couple more spots, but as time goes on about every three or four years, they offer less spots and everyone wants to get in the bank or at least a good majority of people want to get in the bank. Some people take up all the spots or take up 100,000 spots because they want as much of the bank as possible. So it's not this crazy volatile asset. It's something that offers utility. It's something that offers a value statement, right? So you don't lose your dollars. You don't lose money to inflation. This is a spot in digital cyberspace. It's property, but it's not property as in something like land, right? It's not it's not that kind of property. It's property as in you own part of this, this cyber bank. So that's one way to think about it. People are trying to combat inflation. They're trying to get money away from dollars that can be inflated, that can be manipulated. They want this perfect asset that does not change. It's in the code that it only offers so many new tokens, new coins, new crypto every four years, then it gets cut in half. That's what people want. That's why it's gonna be valued more in the future because there's only so much to go around. It can't be inflated to whatever number the government feels like or thinks is right. Now, in addition to that, 0.28% uh, or 0.28 Bitcoin is all it takes to become in the 1% for Bitcoin. So the richest 1% of Bitcoin holders hold 0.28. Now, one way, uh, another way to think about that is there are about 55 million millionaires in the world that might be a little bit higher now because that data is always looking in the past and assets are appreciating. Let's say there are 60 million millionaires, right? Every millionaire can only have about a third of a Bitcoin. There are 18.8 million Bitcoin out there right now. So they can only have one third of a Bitcoin and, and a lot of that Bitcoin is lost. So about four to five million Bitcoin is thought to be lost over the last 10 years because people you know, throw it out, they, they break it, whatever, on their hardware wallets, they lose it, they forget their, their recovery phrases. So they have lost a good amount. So really, if you start thinking, okay, what if there's 15 million Bitcoin? Well, that means every millionaire can have about one fourth of a Bitcoin. And as time goes on, people want to buy it and people will pay more and more for it. Some people are holding hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. So that's something to consider. Now that's just Bitcoin, that's just Bitcoin. We can go down the list because there's a lot of potential in some of these other cryptos, like Ethereum. Ethereum has so much potential. I mean, if you look at the transactions of Ethereum compared to PayPal, Venmo, it's insane. People put way more uh, money through Ethereum than they do these other types of payments. Now, looking at gas fees, Let's just take a look at the gas fees. So Ethereum has a lot of potential. They're moving over to proof of stake from proof of work, but people still love Ethereum, even though you have to pay $117 per transaction right now, which is insane. I mean, there are some people that just won't pay that. They just can't pay that. They, they're trying to buy something that's worth $50. They're not gonna pay $100 worth of fees. Imagine you had to do that, right? You have to send money on PayPal or Venmo and you have to pay two times more or five times more, 10 times more in fees than you do actually for the transaction, right? Everyone would be working with cash, but some people are willing to do that with Ethereum. So if we look at something like NFTs, non-fungible tokens, 
and we start thinking, okay, what if people want to digitize a $5 playing card? They're not going to go with Ethereum. They're not going to do that. Now, of course, we are moving over to proof of stake, which should lower these fees drastically. But that's where other cryptocurrencies like Cardano and Solana, they have much lower transactions. I mean, you're talking about cents compared to, you know, $100. That's where they're going to come in. And that's where there's so much upside potential in Cardano and Solana in some of these other uh, blockchains too. I mean, there's so much potential here. There's such a small market cap. And that's where I kind of think, okay, am I being not greedy enough? Am I being a little bit too cautious? I've been funneling most of my money to cryptocurrencies. But I think what we're seeing is we're seeing everything change in front of our eyes and we're still being a little bit cautious. Now, sure, there could be a coming bear market. I think that's what's holding some people back from buying more when they're seeing near all-time highs, right? I mean, we're very close to all-time highs for Ethereum, about 10% away. Cardano is at all-time highs, essentially. BNB, pretty close. Solana at all-time highs. So I think some people are being cautious, and that makes sense, right? You don't want to invest a ton of money right now if you can buy it for less next year. But who's to say we go through the same kind of bear market? Back in 2017, 2018, very few people, at least people that I was around, I mean, I was in college, but very few people really understood what cryptocurrencies were. I think a lot of people threw money in it because they thought it only goes up. I, I heard a lot of those start stories uh, that, you know, just throw, throw your student loans into cryptocurrencies. But now I think we're starting to see people understand what it means. And at the same time, we're going to have this bear market, this coming bear market. I think a lot of cryptocurrencies are going to be unveiled to banking clients. So who's to say people don't continue to accumulate people, you know, someone rich just goes and buys a Bitcoin in their bank account at $50,000, $60,000, $80,000. Institutions realize how big this was, how big Bitcoin went, this bull market, and they don't want to sell. They realize that it's probably going to be worth $500,000, a million dollars in the future. They don't want to miss out on the potential. Let me be clear. I don't think this is the time to go and throw in all your money. I've been dollar cost averaging since the beginning of the year. And I've been buying a lot of these cryptos when Bitcoin was around 30,000, when Ethereum was under 2,000, when Cardano was a dollar to a dollar 50. So I don't think this is the time to go out and blow all your money, right? I always believe in dollar cost averaging. But if you look a couple years from now, instead of just looking over the next year, there's going to be volatility, obviously. But I think there's a lot of upside potential. There are definitely going to be some people that sell getting ready for the bear market, but who's to say we actually have one? So that's just something to consider. Of course, don't invest money that you can't afford to lose. The other thing is, I think a lot of people will be attracted to the yield, right? There's so many places that are paying percentages for your cryptos. I mean, I, I have a couple different places I put my cryptos, BlockFi and Voyager, links underneath the video, and they pay up to 12% on some of their cryptos. People are going to be very attracted to that, especially people that are retired, right? You can throw money into USDC and make 9%. Well, they're going to put some money in there. Maybe it's not how much they would put in a, in a FDIC insured account or a CD or something like that, but they're going to put 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand in USDC. And then, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to fall and they're going to put some money in there because they get 5% on those. They're going to get 5% on Ethereum staking. That's going to happen. But let me know your thoughts on this down below. Let me know if you think that you are bullish enough or whether you think you're a little bit too bearish or vice versa. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I appreciate it. Thank you for hitting the links down below. If you guys want to check out the Patreon, we do have that giveaway coming here soon. There's a discount too if you sign up for a year. So definitely check that out. Also, check out the links down below to a Voyager and BlockFi. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good holiday weekend. Bye.